I don't know if you guys are like me where sometimes you kind of just get bored of the same old image and you, you want to do something different. You want to spice it up a little bit. Well, a really good way to do that is lens effects. I'll explain what I mean by lens effects after the intro. So I was hanging out yesterday, downtown Toronto, actually there's, it's an island just outside of downtown Toronto with Alan Palander and his friend Brody and they were filming a video and I was kind of just, you know, playing around with some different lens effects and I actually tried out two different lens effects which changed the look of the image drastically and they're a little bit different but also quite similar at the same time. So, so we're gonna look at two different types of lens effects that you can do. And for these lens effects, I was using two different types of lenses, this uh, Lens Baby Soul 45 and this Helios 442. Um, the first look you can only really get with these kinds of specialty lenses from Lens Baby. Lens Baby makes a whole bunch of ty different types of like they're kind of quirky, different, very specialty lenses. You don't want to be using them all the time, but they're really interesting. And the second effect you can actually do with any lens, but there's a specific reason why I chose this Helios 442 to do this effect, which I will explain a little bit later. So the Soul 45 is a really easy way to get this cool little distorted look. Essentially it's, it's blurring the edges and then you're also getting these really interesting looking sun flares. And how it's doing all this is you mount it to your camera and then you can actually tilt this lens around a little bit and depending how you tilt it, how you turn it, um, it creates a different blur effect but it's, it's blurring the outsides kind of like a vignette but it's a blur and you can change which part is in focus and which part is being blurred out. It has these interesting little blades that you can move around to get different effects. Um, basically they just affect the sunlight, really harsh light that's coming in. Um, so you can play around with those to get kind of different sun flares, different effects with really harsh lights like the sun or a bright light. And the other lens effect that I was doing is with this Helios 442, but it's called lens whacking or free lensing. And you might be wondering what the heck is lens whacking. Uh, let me show you guys. So instead of having, you know, your traditional setup here of camera and lens mounted to the camera, we're gonna take off this lens and take off this cap. Good to go. And we're not gonna actually mount this lens to the camera, we're just gonna hold it just outside, kind of holding it there in place, kind of where it should be but we're just doing it with our hands, no mount. And you can get some really cool effects with this. Not only do you get kind of the same effect as with this lens baby, um, it's, a, it's a little bit harder to do it, but you get that same kind of uh, blurry edges look, but then you also get some light leaks um, because light is coming in through the sides into the sensor. So you're getting some light leaks and then this interesting kind of, it's not a tilt shift effect, but it's kind of like a, like a, a circular uh, blur uh, in different parts of the image. Uh, it's probably better that you just watch the footage and you see what I mean. Now a couple of things if you're planning on doing this lens whacking free lensing. One is that it helps to have a smaller lens than the size of your camera mount so you can actually move it in and out. And the reason for this is, first of all, be careful with this. Don't, you don't wanna damage anything inside your camera. The reason is you actually need to be moving the lens in and out to focus the image. So you can't actually use the focus ring. You have to move it in and out to get things focused. So it's, it's a little bit tricky takes a little bit of practice. Um, so what I recommend is you put the lens on infinity focus, infinity, the distance, put it to infinity, and then don't use too shallow depth of field. Use maybe like an F like 3.5 or four even. Play around, especially if when you're when you're practicing because it is really tricky to get the focus and to keep the focus because if you move it just a little bit, it's gonna go out of focus again. And if you move yourself or your subject moves, you have to kind of play around and get it back in focus, which is also a cool effect when it's kind of going in and out of focus, but it is tricky. 
So both of these effects are really cool. They're kind of, they're, they're different kinds of looks, but they're kind of in the same sphere of looks, I would say. Kind of these lens distortion, um, lens effects, I'm gonna call them. And I'd say the Soul 45 doesn't always look super organic, so that's kind of the downside. But the upside is that it's way easier to use because it does actually mount to your camera and then you're just moving this around uh, to to create that effect. But it, it, there were times where it just didn't look as organic as something like the free lensing, which is it's really organic, but it is a lot harder to get the look that you're going for, if that makes sense. It's actually, it's really hard even just to keep things stable because not only do you have to stabilize the camera, but also the lens. If you're if both are moving, it's it looks really shaky. So that's, that's one of the really hard things with lens whacking, free lensing. The focusing is tough, and then the light spill, con trying to control that light spill if there's like a bright light coming into the side, it can create some really heavy light leaks and it's just too much. So you're having to balance out a lot of things and trying to get a cool shot all at the same time. I think the big difference between uh, the two looks of free lensing and then using this Soul 45 uh, Lens Baby is that with this free lensing, you get the light leaks. You don't get any light leaks with this Soul 45. Um, so that's that's probably the biggest difference. And, and yeah, I, I would say that's the biggest difference between these two different effects. Um, so if you don't want any light leaks or any spilling, it's a lot trickier, but you can get away with just kind of like covering things up a little bit um, and then you're not gonna have much light coming in. Um, so you're getting a very similar look to this except without these uh, lens flare adjuster customizer things. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the, the color of the light leaks, it's usually like a purplish color, at least on Canons, I, I don't know why that is, but I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of that color. I wish it was kind of like a, maybe an orangey color or something like that. Again, you could try to change this in post, but it's, it's pretty tricky because it's all over and it's, it's all over the skin tones and everything, and yeah, you don't wanna mess with it too much. So both are really cool effects, a little bit different, but I thought I'd give you guys a few tips of some things that I've learned to make this a lot easier for you guys if you plan on, you know, spicing your footage up with some lens effects. First up, I would say play around with light sources, especially something like the sun. Um, just play around with that a lot. Um, I found I was getting some really cool lens flares with this Soul 45, um, and then with the, the lens whacking, especially the light leaks coming in from the sides, but even also the lens flares on there. Um, there's a lot to play around with. These effects can go overboard really quickly, so again, remember to kind of control them with your hand or have somebody else kind of shade or, or block the light from different angles, wherever it's coming from. Uh, yeah, play around with the light sources. You can get some really cool effects with different lights like the sun. Number two, I would say practice the focusing part on, on both cases, but especially with lens whacking. The focus especially is really hard on lens whacking. It's kind of going in and out the whole time and it's hard to keep uh, perfect. So you need, need, need to practice this because you're literally focusing by moving the lens in and out and it can be really tricky. So. Take your time, practice that, because uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit tricky in the beginning. Number three, I would say keep things stable. Uh, one of the big dangers with this is that you're kind of uh, distracted. You're you're looking at all these cool effects that you're doing, and you're not realizing that you're you're also shaking the camera at the same time, especially with free lensing, because you're having to stabilize both the camera and the lens at the same time, and and kind of keep them together. Uh, it can get shaky real fast, so so make sure you're trying to stabilize things as much as possible. Number four, I would say leave your yourself enough time. I was noticing with a lot of these shots, normally I would get them way faster, but because I was using the, the Soul, Soul 45 or free lensing, it was taking a lot longer to get the shot that I wanted to. Uh, so you're having to think not only the normal stuff, you know, shutter speed, uh, ISO, your composition, lighting, expo all that stuff. You're also having to think about the effect and focusing and all these different things. So there's a lot going on. So leave yourself enough time. This is not one of those things that you can just kind of rush and, and just run and gun all the time. It, it, it takes a little bit more time. You're gonna need to set things up a little bit and essentially stage things a little bit more because you need people to stay still 
in order for you to get the focus. And then lastly, I would say do not go overboard with this. Uh, it's really easy to start doing these lens effects and you're like, oh, this looks insane. This is so cool. It's so different. Nobody else has this kind of footage. And then every single one of your shots is, is some crazy lens flare, light leaks all over the place. And it, it, it gets old really quickly. So I would say don't go overboard with this. I like a lot of these looks that are coming out, but uh, use them just for like kind of like here and there, just like, you know, have some normal shots and then maybe like a close up and then you're lens whacking and it's like, it spices things up a little bit, but don't go overboard with this look. Uh, it, it gets out of control, out of hand really fast. So just sprinkle them in, uh, but don't do this all the time because it, it gets a little distracting, a little bit crazy. Um, yeah, Un unless you're going for a very specific look, like a dream look or something like that, then yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to, to use for that whole sequence. But other than that, I would say don't go overboard. So next time you get bored uh, and you want to spice things up a little bit, try some lens effects. Uh, maybe, you know, try this lens baby or one of the other lens baby specialty lenses or just grab any lens and, and try to do some free lensing, lens whacking and, you know, spice up your footage a little bit. Also, if you didn't know, you can actually make any lens into a macro lens using this free lensing technique. It's, it's not easy, again, because you're having to focus things, but um, when you pop off the lens like this, it actually becomes a macro lens. So uh, just something for you to know, if you, if you need to do some macro shots and you don't have a macro lens, then uh, just take off the lens and pull it out a little bit. All right, that's it for this one. I'll link the lenses down below, and I think it's time for you to get out and go film something now. Learn, make, repeat, you, you've now learned, so it's time to make something and then repeat that process. All right, guys, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, I'm gonna go do some more uh, free lensing. Bye.